my name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to RBI 247. I am your mentor for today and in this series we try to discuss some concepts relating to finance and economics that can be of use to you if you are preparing for any competitive exam right so before moving to question number 1 first i would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel anujindal.in and subscribing to our channel can provide you with access to a lot of good content and do you see this bell icon flashing on the screen don't forget to press it if you are a new entrant it is going to help you to stay in touch with us right and after that you can join our telegram group on this group you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible right so are you ready for question number 1 and here is your question number 1 which says post covid most insurance companies are concentrating in selling protection schemes rather than unit linked insurance plans that are ulips and considering this statement what impact do you think will it have on money flowing into mutual funds so here five options are given to you i hope the screen is perfectly visible to you and out of this five options you have to select the correct option the impact that you think that sale of ulips how can it affect the money that is going to flow into mutual funds right so you can pause the video and think for a while and then select your answer and now moving ahead to the correct statement for this question here is the correct option for this question and the correct option is option b right so option b means so option b means that this is going to reduce the flow into mutual funds and why is this so see ulips we have discussed ulips in one of our previous sessions that what are unit linked insurance schemes so if you haven't attended that session you can ask for its link in the video because if you don't understand the meaning of ulips it is going to be difficult for you to figure this question out right so see i'm going to tell you in brief ulips means a product which is a combination of insurance as well as investment right so someone who buy a ulip gets a protection of insurance scheme and also gets an investment benefit right so now see the statement tells you that currently the insurance companies they are focusing on selling <coughs> sorry they are focusing on selling protection schemes rather than ulips that means they are selling those products which do not have the investment component into it but the protection component right so here is insurance and here is investment the insurance part has the protection component into it right so companies are selling this part the schemes having the protection part not the investment part that is why see once money goes into a ulip then it goes into the market or then the invest the money that goes into the investment portion that is after that that is invested <coughs> sorry after that it, it is invested into market into different mutual funds or into different securities right so if no one is buying ulips or if the sale of ulips is affected that is obviously going to reduce the flow into mutual funds because of the simple reason that people do not want to invest but they want protection right so guys uh, do not confuse it there are investors who have appetite for investment but we are just talking about those those people who are looking for the protection part right i hope now you understand this question clearly moving ahead okay here you can see the solution tells you that dii's that are domestic institutional investors they they you can see that they are backing off in the market right whereas the foreign investors they are putting money or they are shovelling money into india right 
so why is this so why are domestic institutional investors like mutual funds they why are they backing off first reason i told you that there is lesser sale of ulips that means lesser money going into investing one reason behind this is also the enthusiasm of retail investors of jumping directly into market rather than going on for a mutual fund that means that let's say if you are a retail investor you want to invest somewhere you think that let me not get into a mutual fund scheme or let me not get into an sip scheme let me just invest into equities directly or let me just buy the share of reliance on my own rather than going for a mutual fund option that is why the money flowing into mutual fund by this source domestic institutional investors they are backing off or they are having lesser money to put in the market whereas foreign institutional investors we have discussed it many a times in our session that a uh, new money is being printed all over the world and that money is finding way into the emerging economies of the world like india right so that is why foreign institutional investors they are coming in with a lot of investment right so i hope you are clear with this question and we can move to question number 2 and here is your question number 2 for today okay okay this question says a step has been taken by sebi the markets regulator to help mutual funds and protect them from redemption pressure so keyword here redemption pressure which includes side pocketing so somewhere some, something related to side pocketing has been done by sebi or something some a step that includes side pocketing has been put up by sebi now you have to select the correct statements in this regard so here are five statements which are given to you you have to select the correct combination out of it right i hope the screen is perfectly visible to you you can pause the video and read the statements carefully moving ahead to the solution for this question okay here is the solution for the question which says the correct option is a A means statement one and statement four are correct. So, guys, if you remember, we have discussed side pocketing in one of our previous session. So, what is side pocketing? It is simply classification of assets by a mutual fund. So, obviously, the the securities which a mutual fund buys with its monies, they can be good. Either they can be good. or they can be bad so the bad part of their investment goes into a separate category or a separate pocket and this process is known as side pocketing we have discussed it in detail if you want to learn about it you can ask for that videos link right so this is side pocketing and earlier this was allowed only for the only for the assets that were not very highly rated but now sebi is saying that if mutual funds want they can side pocket side pocket their higher rated assets also right and why is this being done in order to support mutual funds so that no episode no other episode like frank franklin templeton happens or no other mutual fund faces any kind of redemption pressure right so statement 1 is correct and apart from that statement 4 that this is a temporary move valid only till the end of the year right moving ahead here you can see i think we have discussed all the points here moving ahead to the next question for today okay here is your third question which says the insurance regulatory and development authority of india that is irdai stated in a in a circular the formation of a working group so first point that this insurance regulator it is forming a working group working group to examine various aspects of ilips that may be offered by some life insurers so here they are talking about a product which is known as ilips okay if you remember we have talked about ulips but now we have to talk about ilips what is ilips right and you have to select the correct statement in relation to this product which might be offered by the insurers right let's see who gives the correct answer moving ahead to the correct statement okay the correct option is d 
D means ILIPs, they refer to indexed linked schemes. So I hope now you understand what is the meaning of I here. The first I, it refers to index. Index linked insurance policies, schemes or uh, index linked insurance policies, right? So these are ILIPs, whereas ULIPs, if you remember, I hope every one of you remember, I'm not going to tell you what does this U stand for and I hope you remember and if you don't, then obviously you can go to that previous session and watch that video, right? Okay, so understand that ILIPs, they refer to schemes in which your investment is or the return on your investment, it is linked to a certain index or a benchmark or a benchmark measure. And that benchmark measure, that benchmark indices, it can be any one of the popular indices like 10-year government bonds return, 10-year government bonds yield. Or apart from that, it can be nifty. Just give me a second. Okay. Apart from that, it can be nifty or it can be sensex. Right? So basically investments which are linked to a particular index and obviously it's an insurance policy, an insurance policy which combines investment whose returns are dependent on an index are simply known as ILIPs, right? Okay, here you can see this working group is going to be hit by Dinesh Pant and after that as I told you, can be linked to Sensex or Nifty and they are quite similar to ULIPs but a little bit of difference, right? ULIPs are not index related. They basically focus on rupee cost averaging or they basically work like mutual funds, right? After that, one interesting factor about ILIPs is that ILIPs are not a new product. They were, uh, they were very popular in late 2000s but they were banned in 2013 because regulator <coughs> IRDAI, that is the insurance regulator, they thought that ILIPs are not suitable for Indian market and there is a lack of awareness regarding such products and people are just entering into it because of the frenzy or because of the popularity of the product. They are not understanding it and they are not getting that whether it suits their needs or not, right? So that is why it was banned and now regulator is thinking. So guys, do understand uh, there is nothing official about it, but they have formed a working group that will look into the need for bringing back of ILIPs or not, right? That whether they should be brought back or not. Different, uh, different aspects of these schemes like product structure, ease of customer understanding, administrative processes. So one factor here, uh, one factor here is that indices like Sensex and Nifty now investors are more aware about such things right so that is why it might be a good time to bring these sort of products back right moving ahead and here is your fourth question for today which says under this philosophy Managers seek strong, healthy and a narrow set of companies with excellent, excellent prospects for growth and offering tremendous opportunities for returns. Which type of investing is being talked about here? So a statement is given to you and this statement tells you something about the philosophy or, uh, or um, the rationale of investing that why do investors put their money into such type of investing? You have to tell the correct option. Let's see who gets the correct answer. Moving ahead to the correct option. And the correct option for this question is E. That means the correct option is thematic investing. So thematic, the word thematic comes from themes, right? So basically what we usually do in market or what we usually talk about it is that how it is good to diversify your investments, have different type of securities in your portfolio, belonging to different sectors, belonging to different regions, right? So here we talk about diversification in traditional investing, but now we are talking about a particular theme of investing. So in this philosophy, 
what an investor does is an investor decides or narrows down on a particular theme that they want to invest their money into those companies or those organizations which are related or associated to that particular theme okay let's take an example for example there is an investor who is very eco friendly and that investor wants to invest in a company which is considered to be very environment friendly they look after what their production processes have an impact or have impact on environment or whatever the production processes that they are undertaking whether they are they are hampering the environment or destroying the environment in any way or not so basically this investor wants to invest in companies in securities that come from, that are issued by green companies or companies who are aware about environment right so do you see how this investor has narrowed down on a particular theme that is being eco friendly right so now there can be investors who want to invest in social issue related companies companies who work Uh, who have very good prospects or who do very good work for the society like opening of schools opening of charitable hospitals so they might want to invest in those sort of companies right so basically identifying a theme and then trying to and then trying to invest and then trying to narrow down the prospects that which organizations are working in that field and then putting your money into that particular company right so currently the very popular ones are the companies the, they are put, who are innovating as you uh, seen uh, you can talk about the topics of artificial intelligence or or uh, the companies who are innovating in financial sector or they are working in cryptocurrency field so these are also some themes with which the investor can identify or can relate to so basically here the the investing is being done on the basis of the idea that the investor has rather than the fact in traditional investing we work on facts that okay this company has good prospects this company has performed very well so these are facts but in thematic investing the investor he tries to work upon the ideas right as you can see here aligns to noticeable social corporate or economic trends and after and after that a trend is ident uh, and once a trend is identified the fund managers they analyze if the trend is short term or structural or speculative and how any changes in the trend will impact other sectors and regions <coughs> and then they try to find out the funds or the securities or the asset management companies who are working in relatable fields right i think we have discussed all the points mentioned here if you want you can take a screenshot of these points for future reference moving ahead to the last question for today and the last question for today is which shape of recovery depicts bifurcation of any economy after a period of recession okay here we are talking about shapes of recovery so this is a very popular topic you can read about it in newspapers currently there are many articles being written on it right so these are some popular shapes you have to tell which one which one of these shape depicts bifurcation or division of the economy right let's see what the correct answer is and the correct answer is c that is k shaped recovery so guys we have already we have uh, talked about in a previous session about the shapes of recovery right so k shape was not talked about and discussed uh, in detail there so that is why we are talking about it now and the other if you want to know what other stand for you can watch that previous video and ask for its link in the comment okay talking about the k shaped recovery so as the statement tells you here is k telling you about the bifurcation or the division of the society so do you see in this figure one side going up having the green part and one side going down so this part going up are the have are the halves of the society or the people who have the things the the people section of the society which is privileged or who is a winner right so events like recession or outbreak of a pandemic does not uh, they, these type of events they do not affect these category this category much 
whereas everyone else is experiencing a bad time so basically this k shaped recovery is being talked about in relation to recovery after the outbreak of corona virus right so many professionals who have good jobs uh, and who uh, and who work in big companies and who can afford to provide them with work from home facilities they are not impact they are not experiencing such bad things that the others are right because they have the resources to feed them during the lockdown period and they have their jobs which can be carried from home but apart from that other people working in the informal sector or manufacturing sectors who need to be physically present at their jobs or who do not have such savings can, which can support them in the times of need they are going down right so this is a k shaped recovery which divides the society into two parts and the distance between them is increasing since 2008 crisis right so k shaped recovery was also talked about when the 2008 global financial crisis took place and now it is being talked about after the corona virus right so the growing gap between winners and losers so these winners and losers they can be anyone right so they can be countries which are winners or losers as you can see that china is recovering very fast they are experiencing a purchasing spree or they are experiencing generation of demand whereas india is not so these winners and losers they can be countries economic sectors just as i told you about people working in formal and informal sectors after that companies and of course people right so it lies somewhere between the v shape and l shape depending upon who you are so it depends upon to which category do you belong to tell that which type of recovery you you will be facing right so these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video and if you did then don't forget to hit the like button and i'll be back tomorrow with some new set of information till then take care of your health keep your studies going on and i'll see you tomorrow thank you for being here